I'm the organizing director with World Beyond War. World Beyond War is a global grassroots network. We have members in 175 countries worldwide. And so I'm really lucky that even though I'm based in New York State, I get to work with volunteers and organizations like CAT um, all around the world. And our mission is to abolish the institution of war and to advocate for a just and sustainable peace. So Siana invited me to talk today a little bit about my work with the No Cansac Coalition in Canada to oppose Cansac, which is North America's largest weapons expo. So I'll talk a little bit about that work um, and then I'll also try to fit in a little bit just more broadly about organizing strategies in general and building coalitions and just sharing some tips about that. Um, so this is a screenshot from the website that I helped to create for No War 2021, which is our coalition website to protest CANSAC 2021, uh, which will be June, our day, our week of action is June 1st through 6th, uh, 2021 in Ottawa, Canada. The actual weapons expo is June 2nd and 3rd. Um, and the website is nowar2021.worldbeyondwar.org. And Tiana is one of our speakers uh, for the week of action. And so to give you some context about how this kind of came about, um, World Beyond War hosts an annual global conference which rotates to a different location every year. And we combine our conferences with direct action. So we have an educational conference with speakers and then also some kind of direct action in the location of the conference that makes sense for that region and what's happening in that area. And so we were invited by Canadian groups to host our 2020 conference in Ottawa, Canada to bring global attention to CANSAC, this huge weapons expo that Canadian groups have been protesting every single year. And by holding our international conference there, we wanted to shine this uh, international light on, on what's happening in Ottawa and Canada's complicity in the global arms trade. Just to give you a sense of how big CANSAC is, um, it is expected to attract 12,000 weapons industry representatives and government officials from 55 countries to Ottawa to buy and sell weapons, perpetuating violence and conflict and war around the world. And because of coronavirus, CANSAC 2020 was canceled, uh, thankfully. Um, and so our organizing was pushed a year uh, now to protest CANSAC 2021 and No War 2020 became No War 2021. Um, so that kind of gives you some context about what we're doing. Um, and so I mentioned that we're doing this week of action. And so uh, the first day includes nonviolence training and art making to create signage for the protests. Uh, the second and third days are the direct action at the Weapons Expo. And then following that uh, is a two-day conference. And then concluding our week of action is a strategy session that was initiated by Canadian groups who wanted to make space for, if, if we're all gathering anyway, let's also have a strategy session about how we can move forward and better work together. Um, so that gives you an overview about the week of action. Um, and in my work at World Beyond War, we always strive to be intersectional, kind of like what we've been talking about during this entire webinar, to showcase these multifaceted impacts of what we call the institution of war. It's social impacts, economic, environmental, cultural, etc. And so the same thing with this. Um, we knew that Canadians had been protesting CANSAC for years, but again, we wanted to make it more intersectional. We wanted to bring in a diversity of groups and bring in, you know, not just Canadian groups, but also international groups to protest it. And so the first thing that we started with was number one, to consult with our Canadian allies who invited us to help with this, but number two, to reach out to our own global contacts and to start building a list of groups that would endorse and financially sponsor the event. Um, and just to share some feedback from our past events and kind of what uh, helped us design this event. Um, one piece of feedback that we get over and over again is to incorporate more creativity. Um, you know, a lot of this information is very heavy, a lot of talking heads. Um, and so kind of like how we started this webinar today with poetry, um, that's something we've been trying to do as well is to incorporate the arts. Um, so I mentioned that the week of action includes art making. Uh, we're having some screen printing to create the banners and signs for the protests. Um, we also have a film screening as one of the evenings during the week. Um, and we also have live music throughout the week. Um, another piece of feedback that we often get when organizing our conferences 
uh, is to have you know more opportunities for networking and just you know providing spaces for activists to connect with each other and so we've designed this uh, with lots of time for break um, very long breaks uh, between sessions so that activists can connect and collaborate and also we've incorporated different discussion sessions and Siana is scheduled to lead one of those discussion sessions which will be a BIPOC meetup and um, we'll also have a veterans meetup and different discussion sessions uh, for activists to share their thoughts on a variety of topics like the impact of war on the environment or the impact of militarism in the media, for example. Um, another strategy that we used for organizing this week of action, um, and this was an idea for one of our, from one of our Canadian allies, um, was to recruit other organizations to make this their annual conference and to host their annual general meeting during this week of action. So a lot of groups have annual conferences. Um, and so, you know, an idea to, to gain more members to come to this is to designate this as their annual conference. So we have the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace and also the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space um, that have, you know, made this their conference as well. So it's not just a World Beyond War event, it's a coalition event. Um, and we've made space and booked the venue so that they can have their AGMs, their annual general meetings during this week of action and recruit their members to come to this. Um, and overall, World Beyond War has been trying to play kind of a logistical role uh, in supporting our allies. Uh, so kind of doing a lot of the back end stuff like designing the website and hosting Zoom meetings, um, providing graphic design support, um, providing an action network platform for making event pages and petition pages and fundraiser pages and that kind of back end support. Um, this this is our statement that describes our coalition. We're an international coalition of individuals and organizations converging on Ottawa, unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory for No War 2021 to say no to CANSAC, Canada's biggest annual weapons expo, Cancel CANSAC. And we've been uh, consistent with using the Cancel CANSAC hashtag. Um, and then this image I wanted to show as well is an image that was made by an artist, Vai Vu, uh, for World Beyond War. And we've also been consistently using this image for all of our materials to make sure that we have a consistent brand for what's now become from No War 2020 to No War 2021. Um, and so this is just a short list of some of the groups that are part of our coalition. Um, I should say we have probably about 50 groups that have endorsed or sponsored from around the world. And I wanted to, to give this list just to show the kind of breadth of support, of course, peace and anti-war groups, but also environmental groups like 350 Canada, faith communities like the Quakers, artist groups like Artists for Peace, alternative media groups like Press for Conversion magazine, and a variety of colleges and universities have also endorsed and sponsored. And this leads me to my next slide, which kind of takes a step back from CANSAC and talks more broadly about coalition building um, to give us, you know, some more kind of theoretical background about what we're talking about and different organizing strategies that you can use when you're organizing in your community. So a coalition is essentially a group of groups and coalition building really me means to me bringing in a diversity of organizations to collaborate on a campaign and it demonstrates um, the diversity of support that we have on an issue. So instead of just, you know, one group, World Beyond War, talking about an issue, our argument is so much stronger when we have a variety of different groups coming from a variety of different perspectives, from an environmental perspective, from a racial justice perspective, um, from all these different perspectives to come and say that this issue is important to them. And it's so rare to achieve um, a victory in isolation. And so it's so important that we can come together as a coalition to pool our resources together. Um, like I was saying, World Beyond War can contribute things like our Zoom platform and our website hosting. And maybe other groups can contribute uh, financially, or maybe they have lots of volunteers they can contribute. So each group kind of brings their own resources to the table and makes our work stronger together. Um, so here are some tips uh, when talking about coalition building. Um, number one, be as broad as possible. The more variety, the better. Again, that gets back to this concept of having uh, a diversity of people to show our people power. It's not just one group or one individual. Number two, when building a coalition to define your structure. And there's no one, you know, correct way to do a coalition. 
um, but you should be upfront uh, and decide as a group how you want to do it. If you want to be informal, that's totally fine. Or if you want to be very formal and have a set of bylaws and um, you know various stipulations, um, but to set that up front so that people know what the expectations are of working together. Number three, to build on existing relationships. So when we were invited by Canadian groups to help with this, we certainly did not want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we wanted to first reach out to the existing groups that have been working on this issue of protesting CANSAC year after year after year um, and ask them for what they needed, what kind of support they needed. And again, bring uh, our contacts uh, and our international networks to uh, support them. And so we combined, we had an Ottawa group uh, that had their own list uh, and we combined our international contacts uh, and made it a broader no CANSAC coalition. Another tip is to facilitate, not to dominate. And again, for a coalition to work, it really needs to be, it needs to require active participation of all members and allow everyone to speak up equally. And we've probably all been in different coalition situations where one group uh, starts to take over or starts to use their branding and suddenly it looks like it's, you know, one organization's effort instead of a group effort. So that's something you really should keep front and center when you're thinking about coalition building is to make sure that it's an equal effort and that your role is really a facilitator. And that gets to the last point, which is about naming and raising up allies. Um, and this is something that I try to be very uh, aware of every single day. And I've learned from my elders who have taught me so much about organizing to really keep this at the forefront of my mind um, whenever possible to, to name allies in the work. Um, even if it's something really small, like if you're sharing a photo, to just take the time to put a little caption of where that photo came from. And certainly it will be beneficial in the long run if you do that and you'll see allies uh, reaching up and, and helping you in return. Um, and so all of this kind of gets to this concept of intersectionality and fusion organizing. Um, for me, coalition building is inherently related to intersectionality. It doesn't have to be, but that's how I see it, because if we're building a coalition, why not uh, make it diverse and make it broad? And like I said, try to reach out to a variety of different groups to build up our people power. And I think with the issue of war, um, we do have this really uh, a great opportunity in a way because war is at the nexus of so many other issues. Uh, war is a leading contributor to climate change. You know, war sucks up two trillion dollars a year that could be spent on any other issue. So, you know, any other group theoretically could get involved in your coalition because you can reach out to them and say, if you care about healthcare, if you care about education, um, if you care about renewable energy, it's going to be really hard to achieve those things while we're spending two trillion dollars a year globally on war and preparations for war. Um, so, I think we have that. Um, advantage when we're when we're doing anti-war organizing and we should really use that opportunity to build these connections and i encourage you to go to our website worldbeyondwar.org and click on the why section um, under the whys we have different fact sheets for all of these cross connections so you can download those fact sheets and use them in your organizing uh, you know why war threatens the environment why war promotes bigotry and all the fact sheets are detailed uh, with footnotes and references for more information how am I doing on time? Uh, you got about two minutes left. Okay. <laughs> um, I will just quickly talk about what we did so far and what we're doing uh, coming up. Um, so this is a screenshot of a newspaper article from the Ottawa Sun uh, when CANSAC 2020 was canceled, amazingly, uh, partly due to coronavirus and also due to our pressure. So. You know, we took the opportunity when the coronavirus started happening in March, um, we took the opportunity to come in um, and to do a lot of different materials to promote our messaging and make sure that our messaging was inserted into the conversation. Um, so we worked with our allies to create various press releases. Uh, we did an open letter with prominent signatories, uh, including Nobel Peace Laureates, and we did that with Nobel Women's Initiative. Um, we also did a letter campaign that had over 7,000 signatures, and that was sent to the Prime Minister Trudeau and the Defense Minister, the Foreign Affairs Minister, the Ottawa Mayor, and the CADC President. Um, so we did a variety of different tactics to, to get our messaging into the media, um, and we were mentioned in this article uh, talking about how CANSAC 2020 was canceled. It says, 
A World Beyond War started a letter writing campaign calling for the cancellation of the trade show. Weapons dealers should not risk the health of the people of Ottawa in order to market, buy, and sell weapons of war, endangering the lives of people around the world with violence and conflict. So that was really great that we had our messaging inserted and that CanSec 2020 was canceled. Um, and so now we're gearing up for No War 2021, and I'll make this my last slide. Um, so just to say a couple things that we're working on with our No CanSac Coalition, we're working on another letter campaign. Um, this one focused on CanSac 2021. Uh, we're also working on some advertisements that would go up in Ottawa on the sides of buses. Uh, we're working on a public education campaign to connect the dots for people and kind of expose uh, Canada's complicity in the global arms trade. There was an idea floated at one of our uh, coalition meetings just a couple of days ago about some kind of infographic or interactive activity so that people could see all of the different Canadian cities where weapons manufacturing plants are located and see, again, the complicity of Canada in the weapons uh, industry. Um, and we're also working on a distributed action map uh, because we don't want to just sit on our butts uh, now and wait for June 2021. We want to build up opposition now that we have 11 months until CANSAC 2021. And so we're working on a distributed action map uh, that would allow individuals and organizations to put uh, virtual events and in-person events uh, between now until June 2021. 21 to, to start, you know, keeping up the pressure um, and doing different protests and webinars and various actions between now and then. Um, and I will stop now. Thank you very much.